Hello, this is Roland Jung from ePlan, and today I want to talk about the terminal strip assembly. How can we help you there? So, on one side, of course, we all know that inside of ePlan, we handle terminals. This is a terminal strip editor. This is where you can see how these terminals are built. This is where you assign the part numbers. This is how you number your terminals. This is how you organize your terminals to get the optimized terminal strip. Now, of course, once this terminal strip is nicely organized, you have to go and get the parts specifically. What I recommend, of course, is to pick this terminal strip and simply dump it over to the project complete planning interface here, where you choose whichever you want terminal strip, let's say we pick one here out of the blues, just one like this, the 125, here we go, and we just export it. This will go directly to a tool that you can get from Phoenix Contact, which is this term, terminal strip editor. Now, some of you may think that you create the terminals here. No, you don't create the terminals here. You create them in ePlan by placing terminals on the connections where you think the connections have to be connected between the inside and the outside of the terminals. And then you come over here and this generates the terminal strip that you want. You can actually, a service that a lot of countries, Phoenix Contact uh, gives you that, that added value uh, service where they will actually order the whole strip as it is with the labels and deliver you exactly what you need. Now, a small topic that you might want to know here when they deliver that uh, strip, you may want to have that strip exactly in the length that you can work with it. There's a cutting edge here at 12 millimeters that is always nice because what it does, it basically reorganizes your DIN rail so that you can just slip it in. Anyways, if you want to order this, then it's already done. Then I think that this step here, terminal strip assembly, is over right but if you care to do this in-house then in-house we have something we call at ePlan the terminal lineup diagram so of course this is how it looks this is a report that tells you exactly what part numbers to be used and what labels to be assigned but this is quite detailed some of you may prefer having this with a little bit more graphics so one thing you can quickly add is just to add some graphics here to what terminal this is, and then it will basically guide your people to pick the right part number to represent. Okay, this is a, a clip fix. This here is a terminal, regular terminal, regular terminal, PE terminal, etc. But some other people may want to have even this in more graphics. We can find some videos about people talking to you about how to do this with symbols. I'm going to show you a different trick here. I'm going to use subforms with conditional forms. So basically, you have a master form that calls up under certain conditions. Here, the part number is actually the condition. These different graphics. This is a little bit easier, I believe, to actually handle because as you go through this, you have your master form that actually calls up the basic information and then you can get into this situation here where I mean the, the four the, the graphic still looks like it looked before um, except here in this case what is missing is the graphics for this particular form not really a terminal here so what I'm doing is I'm picking that part number and the graphics I would have liked to see is the graphics like this one here now this graphic I want it probably rotated, so I'm going to just rotate it like this, 90 degree. I may actually want to flip it. In some cases, you know, uh, when once it's rotated, it's not uh, like this one, and then I just make a copy. In this copy, I name it a specific name, which is primarily the name of that part number. Uh, you can do it the way you want, but. I know that my graphics here is related to the, the um, specific uh, terminal itself. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to paste in my graphic that you just saw earlier up here. That's it. So in this case here, I don't need as wide of a box because 
it's actually smaller. This is the data area and it can be bigger or smaller and you have objects that are attached to it. Just make sure that your graphic is attached to the data area. So you use this small trick about, you know, selecting, assigning, using the control key, and that pretty much creates a new data area. New data area that will be taken over once you created the condition. And the condition is basically starting at the master form, which is your primary form that always shows up that has the header and everything. And you have a small conditional area here where you can add specifically this new uh, form, right? And you can then add the condition under which this will appear. Now, the condition, in my case, I based it on the part number. So in this case here, the part number one has to be that specific part number. Now, I also figured out that sometimes you have to add a second condition because sometimes, you know, it's not that clear. I need this graphic. I need it only when the second part number is not. Uh, associated um, to anything like a separator or something like that. So this uh, particular form, I can move it up in my conditions the way I want. As you can see, I have a few of those um, already set. And that will, as soon as I regenerate, will then serve as a special condition. So coming back to my form that you saw here, this one worked out fine because I had my condition for this part number. But now in this one uh, here, the next one that was actually empty was this one here. You can see this was now the part number. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run here the tool, update, and see what happens. And you can see that in the conditions where I only have a part number but no accessory, I can see right away that particular graphic. Where the graphics do not appear, is because I'm under different conditions. So I have to create something more specific that may take up a little bit more space. Uh, I've created this earlier here on this one, for instance, like this end piece, right? It's a combination of three part numbers. So my graphics are no longer just the P terminal, but it's a P terminal, the end case, and the clip fix, because we all assign it to one and the same object. So you have to be a little bit more precise. But anyways, that's the trick. And interesting is that it gives you a very graphical representation. And yet, um, you know, if that can help your people assemble it, not really uh, put it the wrong way or put the wrong terminal here, hey, so be it. This is a conditional form. So uh, for our friends out there, you ePlan users, hey, come and see us. If you need some support on this, Please um, always remember you can call up your ePlan experts if you have some specific questions on existing forms. On existing forms, you can always go here to the help and uh, create a support ticket. If you need some assistance or guidance in what I just showed you there, our experts will be happy to book some consulting with you, some trainings, and you'll be able to take those. If you like what you just see here, well, do please check what you have to on the YouTube's channels so that you are aware about the next video that comes out. We have a few interesting uh, channels that are running out there that help you use ePlan in a better way. So this was a terminal lineup diagram used with a conditional form.